My name is Anatta Miri, and I'm an art educator from the museum. And we're finally open again, but we know that many of you cannot visit us here yet. And so we're bringing the art of Edvard Munch to your living rooms. Today, we're going to see the exhibition called Yonder, Edvard Munch and Nature. And what you're going to see here is my own interpretation of what we're going to see. I call it Woman on the Way Out. I will present to you five different paintings where we see spaces and nature affecting this character. So, let's step inside and look. We're now standing in front of the painting called Melancholy, painted between 1900 and 1901. And this is where our story begins. In this story, what's going on here is that she's entrapped, she's closed in, and she's unhappy. And we can see that from two things, both the figure itself and also the surroundings. And let's start with the figure. This woman right here, she looks unhappy. And we see that from the dark stare in her eyes. There's a darkness there. She's not really there. She's somewhere else. There's something blank in her eyes. In addition to that, we have her hands. They're haphazardly placed on her lap. She's looking as if she's slouching on that chair. She's not really sitting straight, is she? I wonder where her thoughts are. And then we have her surroundings. Notice the warmth and the light that comes in through the window to the wall behind her. But that warmth isn't really hitting her. She's still feeling that coldness. And then there's the window itself. There's an open landscape here. This nature is commenting on what she's feeling, or that at least is one interpretation. There's an emptiness there, a coldness, and this is reflected in how she's feeling. But then we have that contrast in this painting, which is that red flower, that strange little detail. That red flower that we're seeing here is placed on a, a tablecloth, and that tablecloth has a strange pattern to it. Our eyes are immediately drawn to that flower, as are the woman's eyes. Do you see that? We're both looking at the same thing, but she's not reaching out for it. Why is that? She's not touching it. Perhaps she does want to. This painting was originally called Melancholy Laura, but there's this great discussion whether or not this is Laura, because Laura, you see, was the younger sister of Edvard Munch. And she was put in mental institutions many times throughout her life. It's a very tragic story. But we also have this insistence from the other sister of Edvard Munch, Ingrid, who said, no, this is not Laura, because Edvard Munch wouldn't really paint her that way, would he? But whether or not this is Laura, we need to follow our story. We need to see how the entrapped woman reacts to the spaces around her. In this next painting, we see the woman has taken a step away from the window. This painting is called Woman Standing in the Doorway and is painted from between 1906 to 1907. And what's going on right here is very strange. And in our story, we need to follow this woman. So let's have a closer look. This woman is clasping her hands together as if in a prayer. And not only that, but she's looking out for something. What is she wishing for? What is it that she's looking to get out of? Well, it's that house, isn't it? Look to beyond that house, to the colors that are outside of that house. These colors make us think of fall, and fall can symbolize many things. For example, it could symbolize the end of something, but it could also symbolize change. So she's wishing for change. And in this case, change doesn't necessarily mean 
good luck and fortune. It could also mean misfortune. Change means so many different things. And this woman who's standing in the doorway, in that threshold between the inside and the outside, she's really wishing for any kind of change. It's quite interesting, actually. So, this is said to be interpreted as being Hedda Gablet, who was this very strong female character of the same title of a play by Henrik Ibsen. And Edvard Munch, he actually created some sketches and paintings for set design in 1906 to 1907. Another way of seeing it is from the blue room that we find this character in. And the interesting thing about Hedda Gablet is, of course, what she wanted. She wanted change, she wanted excitement, but she also wanted to keep that um, facade that she had created for herself. So there's this internal conflict in this strong character. And I kind of see that same conflict going on in this woman right here. But either way, we need to follow our woman here. We need to see what happens when she finally takes a step away from the house. We're now moving from fall into winter. And we see the woman now in a winter landscape. In this winter landscape, we see a painting. This painting is from between 1922 to 1924. And it's called On the Veranda Stairs. This painting shows us a woman who has taken a step away from the house. She's uncertain. She's still on the property. There's a darkness here in contrast to the earlier paintings that we saw here. In the earlier painting, what we saw was colors, potential, and the uncertainty. But here is definitely something unknown. So what's going on? It's quite strange, isn't it? Let's take a closer look at what's going on in this painting. We first start with her figure and her face. In this painting, what we see is a woman who is enveloped by darkness. The darkness seems to come from her. Her face looks so small compared to the rest of her body. It's very strange, that face. It looks like she's been crying. It looks like there are black tears just running down her face. But I'm uncertain. And she also seems uncertain because her hands, they're kind of, she doesn't know where to place them. She doesn't know what to do with her hands. In addition to that, she's ready for the winter. She's ready for the change, considering what she's clothed in. She has this thick dress on and a coat over that. In addition to that, she also has a hat on her head. So this is a quite strange moment for her because she does want to move on. Yeah, she's afraid. She's afraid of what she's stepping into. So what is it? Does that darkness represent the uncertainty and the unknown that she's stepping into? Or is it coming from the uncertainty that she's feeling in this moment, from having to take that step forward? In addition to that, dear audience, there is a presence here that I find quite strange. This presence is seen right here. Do you see that? Who is that? What is that shadow? Is it a lover that she's going towards? Or is it an enemy? Is it someone who wants her nothing good in the life? Or is it someone who she's leaning onto? We don't know, especially in our story. So it's up to you. What do you see? In addition to that, I want you to explore. Comment below. What exactly is she going through? What is she thinking? What might be going through her head right now? And what is that face? Because it looks like a mask to me. It looks like something she's hiding behind. I don't know. What I do know is that we need to follow this story. 
And in the story, we need to take a step away from the house. We have finally taken a step away from the dark room that has to do with landscapes depicting the inner emotional life. And we're now in the bright room that has to do with the external forces and how they affect us. We're now standing in front of the painting called Woman by the Veranda Steps from 1942. This is a later painting by Edvard Munch. And here we see that our woman has finally taken a step out of the house. She's not on the veranda steps. She's not just close by, she's outside. And it's an interesting painting because we see now the effect that this space has on her. And there's a reflectiveness that she also has to that space. Let's have a closer look here. What I love about this woman is that she's quite daring. She's very modern. Her stance looks completely different from the woman that we met in Melancholy. Remember that woman who was sitting with a slouch? This is not her, it seems. She's so strong. Look at her jeans. It, the, those white pants really give me a sense that, this are, that these are jeans. And then there's this green t-shirt and that bold print on the cardigan over her. And then there's her hairstyle. Now we do not see the profile of her face and the details of her face, but what we do see is that strong hairstyle. It's either a hairstyle where the hair is tied back or it's a bob, it's a short haircut. I don't know, what do you see? And then pay close attention to what she's actually looking at. It's interesting because I, I think I see two different things. The first thing is, I see a red plant that's crawling its way up, somewhat similar to Virginia creepers. They're crawling their way up on this wall on the side of the house. Or it could be a fire that this woman ignited. All of a sudden, it turned into a very violent painting, didn't it? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing that she's taking a step away from this house. Maybe it was a house that was already on fire and she's looking back on it and saying, finally, I'm moving away from this house. There are so much dangers inside of it. I don't know. What do you think? Also, over here, there's something yellow and orangey. And this also looks like a fire to me. And it's all up to the eye and the beholder but we need to follow our story. I think we're all waiting for the same thing, a happy ending. So let's see where she moves to the final stage. We're moving through the garden, through the flowers, and we're moving into an open landscape. And in this open landscape, we see colors, we see movement, we see something quite beautiful. Here we see woman with poppies from between 1918 and 1919. And this beautiful painting, we see movement through the woman herself and also the nature that we see. So finally, woman is engaging with nature. Let's have a closer look. We see, first of all, the movement in the grass we see that there are different breaststrokes that's moving upwards and there's different coloring as well. There's movement in her dress, in between the folds of her dress. And then look at that gorgeous hat that she has on, such colorful um, stripes in her hat. And do you remember in the first painting, that red flower that you saw in a vase on the tablecloth? kind of reminds me of those. She's finally engaging. She's finally a part of nature. That flower that she looked at but couldn't pick, she's doing it right here. So, what does this tell us? It tells us that the movement of the woman between the spaces is a, both a commentary on woman of the time that these were painted, 
in terms of woman in the society and the spaces that she took there and also in the arts. And it also comments on our own time because similar to this woman, I really want to bask in the sunlight. I really want to partake in nature. I really want to be a part of it again. And we've been enclosed and closed off from it all for a very long time. I hope that you got joy from this. I hope that you enjoyed this interpretation of a woman on the way out. And I hope that you enjoy the summer and bask in the sunlight. Thank you. Bye.